Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, a free site, BettingAngle.us, a free site. Today is the day after the Clipper explosion in the second half against the Utah Jazz, right? Understand what happened. The Jazz are cruising. They're up by more than 20. They're a team that was the one seed in the West. They were a team that had the defensive player of the year, were known for their defense and their three-point shooting. They were playing against a team that didn't have Kawhi Leonard, first team All-NBA this year. And what we saw in that third and fourth quarter, right, um, is the kind of thing that we need to look back on and we need to figure things out. Right, basketball is an interesting sport. These are the perils of being a sports better. I was on my way to Steak and Lobster, saw it vanish in two quarters. In fact, it's less than two quarters. Terrence Mann, he's what I call a ringer. Um, the story of the night was the fact that without Kawhi Leonard, who is a Jordan figure, Right? The room clears a little bit. They throw the ball to Kawhi Leonard, and sometimes he'll have the ball for 7 to 10 seconds while he tries to beat his man one-on-one. -on -one. Instead of that isolation, the Clippers pass the ball without the superstar. They move the ball better, and they got the ball to guys like Terrence Mann. Understand Terrence Mann. I don't care what the public perception is. As a guy who hit more than 50% from the floor this year, he hit more than 80% from the free throw line this year, and from three-point range, he hit more than 41%. Right, folks? This is a guy who, when given an opportunity, can blow up like he did yesterday. I would encourage gamblers, too, to look at his plus-minus for the series before yesterday. For some reason, when this guy was on the court, the Clippers were outperforming their opposition. Also, I want people to look more closely at the Clippers. I expected them to lose to the Jazz. I'm just going to be blunt here. But understand, as fluky as yesterday's second half looked, in terms of three-point shooting percentage as a team, the Clippers were number one in the NBA. As a team, they hit more than 40% of their threes. What I also want, especially after people watched uh, Ben Simmons struggling from the free throw line in that Philly game, what I want people to do is to look closely at the Clippers. Right? The Clippers are number one in the entire NBA as a team in terms of free throw percentage. So when the game gets down to the waning minutes and they need to foul someone, when the Clippers have their small lineup on the court, there is no one to foul. Right? Understand how bizarre the whole thing is. The Clippers have DeMarcus Cousins on the roster, right? They have DeAndre Jordan. You didn't see them yesterday. They were playing small ball, stretched the court out, took Defensive Player of the Year, Rudy Gobert, right out of the action. So, my point to you is, this is a team that actually has more legs structurally than people envision, right? There are many people who looked at the second half and thought, oh, the Clippers are getting lucky here. This is a complete fluke. Well, it's a complete fluke for a team that already was number one in the NBA in terms of three-point accuracy, right? So this is a sleeper team, especially in this era where Chris Paul is out, Right? He's in COVID protocol. Who knows how much longer that's going to last? And keep in mind, the problem is DeAndre Ayton might be taken out of the game by the Clipper spacing the same way Rudy Gobert was. 
right? So this Clipper team is interesting, right? Especially given the injuries to the Brooklyn Nets and the fact that they might end up playing. Distinct possibility in my eyes. The Milwaukee Bucks, should the Clippers get to the finals, understand. Giannis is a two-time former Defensive Player of the Year. Right? There has to be an open question on whether they could take Giannis out of the game like they did Rudy Gobert. And we know, unlike your typical Clipper these days, Giannis struggles from the free throw line. Let's just say the NBA playoffs right now are in complete flux. Thanks to Terrence Mann and the Clippers, right? I'm eating beans and rice and not steak and lobster right now. If you're getting a great deal on Clipper futures, you might want to take a hard look, even though the Clippers don't have home court in the Western Conference Finals and have to do a quick turnaround after an emotional game, right? Likewise, in the East... Let's just say I saw nothing in that 76er Atlanta Hawk series that leads me to believe that the winner of that series is going to beat the winner of the Nets versus the Bucks. And the Nets right now, who I think have more talent when healthy, are badly injured, right? James Harden, courageous, gimpy. Right, Kyrie Irving, bad ankle, who knows if he's going to be able to make the cuts he normally makes. I think the Bucks, who the last time I looked, believe it or not, were an underdog for Game 7 in Brooklyn. Have a chance to get by the Nets. If they get by the Nets, I think they get by the winner of Atlanta, Philly. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I congratulate the Clippers. I thought Utah was going to win that series. They did not. Uh, what a shame we had that third and fourth quarter. One man's opinion. One man's opinion. As I said, it's a beans and rice day for me. I hope you did better than I did. Let's enjoy the rest of the show. If you have some thoughts on the NBA that you want to share with our listeners here, I hope you leave those comments in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.